In the year 10,000 BC, the tribe known as Yagals are having trouble surviving because it's become very hard to find mammoths to hunt for food, bone, and fur. Every day their hunters wander further and further from the tribe to find food, and one night they return with a small girl named Evelet. She had been holding on to her dead mother, and the hunters were impressed by her bright blue eyes, which they never saw before. The tribe's shaman, known as the Old Mother, channels the spirits to share a prophecy, four-legged demons will come to their valley on the day of their last hunt. A mighty warrior will arise from this hunt, who will take Evelette as his wife and together they'll lead the tribe into a new life with no more hunger. However the tribe's chief doesn't believe the prophecy and wants to find an alternate way to feed his people instead of waiting for a hunt that could take years. Before leaving, he gives his best friend Tiktik the holy white spear and asks him to protect his son Vlay. After the chief leaves, Vlay begins being bothered by all the other boys for being the son of a coward that abandoned the tribe. Tiktik has to always stop fights and reminds the kids not to speak like that about their former chief. Vlay begins spending time on his own and Evelette joins him because she understands how hard it is to be alone since the four-legged demons killed her people. Touched by her company, Vlay promises he'll never let her be alone again. Years pass, and Vlay and Evelette spend so much time together that they fall in love. When the time for the last hunt arrives, young Baku tells adult Vlay that the old mother is sure the day of the prophecy has come and that everyone believes Karen will win Evelette's hand. Their conversation is interrupted by adult Evelette, who distracts Baku with food so she can go on a walk with Vlay. Evelette is worried that Karen may be too good to beat and asks Vlay to run away together, but Vlay refuses to run like his father did and promises to win the hunt. At that moment, Baku announces the mammoths have arrived. Tiktik reminds the hunters that the one that kills a mammoth will claim the white spear and be the new chief before guiding them to the field. They slowly sneak up on the herd and Tiktik is the first one to find the lead mammoth, so he starts yelling at it to scare it. The other hunters copy him and when the mammoths begin running away, the hunters follow them. One particularly huge mammoth tries to run through a narrow passage and the tribe catches it in a net before Karen throws his spear at him, but he misses. The mammoth shakes its body until it frees itself and continues to run with the net stuck to its feet, thus Tiktik tells the hunters to let go of the net because the beast's too strong. Leah's hand is stuck in the net and can't let go, thus the mammoth drags him away with it. Eventually the net gets stuck on some rocks and the mammoth finishes freeing itself to then start charging after Dlay. The boy dodges the attacks and frees his hand to toss his spear, but his shot only makes the mammoth angrier. Then Dlia finds another spear, but this one is stuck on the rocks, so he tries to run back. The mammoth chases him and accidentally walks into the spear, which pierces its heart and causes it to fall dead on top of Leah. The tribe immediately comes to save him and congratulates him for killing a mammoth alone, which nobody has ever done before. The old mother hands him the white spear together with Evelette's hand. The mammoth is taken back to be eaten and the tribe throws a celebration, but Lay is overwhelmed with guilt because the death of the mammoth had been an accident. He asks Tiktik for advice because lying is bad but he doesn't want to lose Evelette, and Tiktik reminds him it's not the way of the Yagal to claim the white spear with a lie. Later in the evening, Vlay tells Evelette that he's given the spear back to Tiktik but that he still loves her and wants to be together with her. Sadly Evelette sees Vlay giving up the spear as giving up on her and leaves. The next morning, the tribe is suddenly attacked by the four-legged demons, who turn out to be horse riders. They capture all the strong people to be used as slaves and kill anyone that dares challenge them. Baku hides in a hut and has to watch how his mother is killed by one eye. Vlay fell asleep outside the tribe to deal with his guilt and is woken up by the screaming, so he immediately comes to help. However Tiktik stops him because they have no chance against them. The leader of the riders known as Warlord notices Evelette's beauty and decides to take her for himself. After the riders leave with a bunch of new slaves, the survivors try to take care of what's left of the tribe. Vlay decides he wants to go after the riders, and Tiktik and Karen accept to go with him. Baku wants to go too and is told to stay back because he's a kid, however when the trio leaves Baku sneaks out and joins them anyway, explaining he has no family left. After walking for a few miles, they find a bunch of stones that indicate someone made a fire there and a piece of Evelette's necklace that confirms they're on the right track. As they move further, the group is hit by a snowstorm, and because the old mother is following their spirits, she feels the freezing cold as well. The hunters manage to survive the snowstorm, but they wake up to discover the snow destroyed all the tracks left by the horse riders. They wander for many days and nights, and they start to wonder if they're getting lost. Meanwhile one eye discovers Evelette has been dropping parts of her necklace, and when she refuses to hand it over, Warlord whips her hands to break her determination. Sometime later, the hunters pass by that area and find the necklace covered with blood on the ground. Lay worries about Evelette's life but Baku tells him maybe she only lost it. At that moment, they notice how birds are flying away from the forest in fear, meaning the riders have gone that way. The forest is full of dangerous creatures, and when a mysterious animal takes away one of the riders, Warlord whips everyone to make them move faster. Moments later, Blay finds part of the missing rider's armor on the ground, allowing him to follow a trail to the rider's camp. Blay wants to attack now, but Tiktik points out it's a terrible idea because the riders are keeping watch and they'll be caught, so they must be patient. The next morning, Evelette is awakened by one eye, who tries to take advantage of her. Blay immediately comes to knock him out and reunites with Evelette, 
but they're interrupted when the horses suddenly begin to panic because of something they saw in the woods. Lei takes Evelette with him, and as the riders get ready to leave, Warlord notices his favorite girl is gone. Lei takes advantage of the distraction provided by the horses and together with Evelette they begin freeing some of their people, but one eye sees them and begins chasing them. As they run, they meet up with Tik Tik and the others, and unfortunately one eye manages to capture Karen. The chase is suddenly interrupted by the attack of terror birds. While the riders fight the birds, Baku climbs a tree and Tik Tik tries to defend himself, only to get wounded. The group tries to hide among the trees and Lei promises Evelette he'll be back soon before he rushes out to distract the birds away from Baku. A new chase begins through the forest and Lei climbs on a rock to reach a bird above its head and take it out. Then he runs towards the bamboo area, where he uses a bamboo stick as a spear to kill the other bird. While Lei is busy with this, the riders take the chance to capture Baku and Evelette. Lei returns and finds Tik Tik bleeding but still alive. He immediately makes a pallet to carry Tik Tik as he follows the riders through the savanna, only stopping to eat and sleep. The first night, Lei makes a fire and cauterizes Tik Tik's wound while he apologizes for not having listened. Then Lei goes hunting for food and because he's running in the dark, he accidentally falls into a pit trap, falling unconscious. Back in the tribe, Old Mother wakes up with visions of something terrible happening soon. That night it begins to rain heavily and the pit fills with water. The rain wakes Lei up and he notices a saber-toothed tiger in the pit with him. At first Lei thinks of killing it, but then he feels sorry for it and decides to free it as he asks it not to eat him. The tiger approaches Lei to smell him yet leaves without attacking, this allows old mother to fall asleep again without worries. Lei climbs out of the pit and reunites with Tik Tik, who is already feeling better. He's heard an attack beyond the hills and can see the smoke in the distance, so the duo decides to investigate. They arrive at a small village that also was attacked by the riders. As soon as they find food, they begin to desperately eat, only to suddenly be surrounded by the armed tribe that lives here. It seems the duo's about to get killed, but at that moment, the tiger shows up, causing the tribe to step back. The tiger approaches Lei and gives him a groan of approval before roaring at the locals for daring to threaten him. After the tiger leaves, the locals put down their weapons and invite Lei and Tik Tik to eat. Leader Nakudu can speak their language and explains he learned it from a man that looked like Lei, meaning his father passed through this area before. Lei wants to know where to find his dad, but unfortunately he was taken by the riders too, and nobody has ever escaped from them. Then Nakudu shows them some paintings that talk of a prophecy about a man that can talk to the tiger and will free their people, obviously referring to Lei. Nakudu sends words to the other tribes, but Lei doesn't feel like he can lead. To make him feel better, Tik Tik explains that his father didn't abandon him, he left to find a better life for the tribe, so it's up to Lei to follow or not his ideals. The next morning, the messenger comes back informing them the other tribes were attacked by the riders as well. Tik Tik wants to go after them, and Nakudu asks his men to get ready to leave. As everyone says goodbye to their families, Lei notices Nakudu is alone, and Nakudu explains the riders killed his wife and stole his son Tudu. Speaking of Tudu, he meets Baku while they're being dragged around by the riders, and they quickly become friends. When the group stops to rest, one eye tries to make Baku drink some water, but Baku responds by attacking him. one eye immediately jumps on him to kill him, so Evelette asks the warlord to stop it. The warlord can't say no to her and hits one eye to make him stop, which angers one eye and almost makes him draw his sword. However he knows he can't hurt the leader right now and promises revenge later. Back to Dlay, he leaves the village with the others and is shocked to see many other tribes already waiting for them just because they've heard the great leader has arrived. The group starts an arduous walk without stopping to sleep or rest, and each day that passes brings more tribes to join them. Eventually they make it to the river and discover the riders are leaving on boats full of cages with the slaves. Lei can't help yelling Evelette's name and as soon as she hears him, Evelette shows the others that Lei will come to save them. The kids are excited to see such a huge group of warriors, but the riders immediately make them shut up. Since they can't follow actual boats, the tribes stop to discuss their options. The story says that the river moves like a snake through the sand, and the slaves are taken to the eye of the snake, which rests under the sun that doesn't move under the moon. The only way without boats is through the desert, but nobody can walk that far. Lei refuses to give up and guides the tribes to the desert anyway, promising he'll find the eye of the snake. The tribes walk for several days, feeling like they're getting lost. Some days later, Lei looks at the sky and realizes that the eye of the snake refers to the North Star, so they need to travel at night to use it as a guide. Meanwhile the old mother has stopped talking to anyone and just stays sitting on her spot, waiting for the right moment to finish her duty. Sometime later, the tribes finally find the rider's destination, a place known as the Mountain of the Gods. The slaves already arrived a few days ago and have been put to work to build a pyramid for an advanced civilization. These men have also slaved mammoths, treating them with a lack of disrespect that angers Baku and Karen. Whenever a horn can be heard, everyone must fall to their knees to receive the leader known as the Almighty and his priests. Today the Almighty isn't pleased with how slow everyone is working, so he orders the priests to sacrifice a slave as punishment. One of Karen's friends is then thrown off the building, instantly dying. Meanwhile Dlay begins losing hope because even with all tribes together, 
they don't have enough people to attack. However Tiktik points out that if the slaves join them, they'll be much more. When night falls, Glei and Nakudu sneak into the caged building to check on the slaves. While Nakudu reunites with his son, Glei asks Baku about Evelet, only to learn the women are in a different building. Then Glei apologizes to Karen for getting him caught, but Karen is a believer in the prophecy and swears to follow Glei to the end. A slave from another tribe protests Glei's presence here because he'll get everyone in trouble, and he doesn't care how many spears he has since weapons can't kill a god. Nakudu tells him that Glei has powers that allow him to speak to the tigers, and the slaves immediately introduce him to a blind man that they keep hidden underground. This blind man used to be servant to a god that ran away and knows that what the god fears the most is the mark of the hunter, which represents the brightest star of the heavens. If Glei doesn't have the mark, he can't kill the Almighty. At that moment, they hear the guards approaching, so Glei and Nakudu need to leave. First though Glei asks the blind man about his bracelet, which looks familiar. It turns out his father had been the one to save the blind man's life, but sadly he's now dead. Then Nakudu and Glei run back to their army, only to discover a few guards have followed them. The tribesmen get ready to fight, but Tiktik shows up first and fights them alone. He takes all of them down with masterful skill, but one of the guards only pretends to be dead and stabs Tiktik when he turns around. Glei rushes to Tiktik's side, telling him he needs him because the slaves won't fight with him since they have their own prophecy. Tiktik reminds him prophecies have many faces, then he hands Glei the white spear before dying. In the meantime, Evelet is taken to Warlord's chamber so he can take advantage of her tonight. Evelet carefully steals his sword, but before she can defend herself, they're interrupted by the priests and the guards, who immediately arrest Warlord for stealing a slave from the Almighty. It turns out one eye is tattled on Warlord as his revenge. Then the priests take the sword from Evelet's hand and discover the scars form the mark of the hunter. The priests inform this to the Almighty, who gets furious at the news. Back to Glei, he buries Tiktik while Nakudu reminds him his father would have wanted him to be a good leader. Glei finally accepts the white spear and gives the tribes a great speech about working together to kill giants like they do to hunt mammoths. In the morning, they get ready with a plan. After burying their spears in the sand, they sneak into the camp pretending to be slaves, and Glei tells Baku he shall be a hunter today. He also begins passing around a message of an incoming fight. Meanwhile Evelet is taken to the Almighty together with Warlord, who is whipped for his betrayal. The priest also informs Almighty that a great army of spear warriors is nearby, meaning they need to get ready. Back to the slaves, Glei and Karen find the mammoth leader, so they send Baku and Tudu to do their part. The kids free the mammoths from their bindings and once they're done, Glei gives the signal to start the fight. As all the spears begin attacking the masters, Glei tries to scare the mammoth leader to no avail. At that moment the guards show up and Karen fights them to bide Glei some time, sacrificing himself for his people. Furious at losing a friend, Glei finally yells at the mammoth loudly enough to scare him, and the mammoths begin running down, crushing all the guards. The slaves notice this and finally are inspired to rebel as well, so soon tribesmen are fighting their oppressors all over the place. When Almighty hears what's going on, he orders the priests to kill Evelet in front of everyone to make them lose hope. As soon as Glei sees Evelet, he makes the warriors stop fighting, and the slaves can't help falling to their knees when they hear the horn. Almighty shows up and makes a threat through his priest, if Glei doesn't turn back, he'll kill Evelet. Glei only accepts if he's allowed to take his people with him, and the Almighty lets him have the people of his tribe, but not the others because they belong to God. Refusing to accept such terms, Glei throws his white spear and quickly kills Almighty as he informs everyone that he wasn't a god, he was just human. Inspired by this revelation, all the slaves join the fight again. Baku sees one eye and tries to kill him to get revenge on his mother, but he fails his shot and one eye captures Tudu. This proves to be a mistake because Nakudu immediately kills one eye to save his son. While the slaves enter the main building to bring down the priests and burn their boats, Warlord frees Evelet and takes her away on his horse. Glei begins running after them and when Evelet sees him, she steals an arrow to stab Warlord, making them both fall off. Evelet and Glei run toward each other, but before they can reunite, Warlord shoots his bow and hits Evelet. This is felt by the old mother, who immediately begins bleeding. A furious Glei runs to Warlord and kills him with a white spear. People around him begin celebrating their victory, but Glei only has sad eyes from Evelet, who dies in his arms. Devastated, Glei runs to the mammoths to ask for a merciful end of things for himself, but at that moment, the old mother gives her last breath. As she dies, Evelet comes back to life. Glei run to the love of his life and the tribesmen can celebrate for real this time. Sometime later, the tribes return to their corresponding villages. Nakudu gives Glei some seeds his father had collected, which should help feed his people. Both tribes say goodbye forever, since that's the last time they see each other. A few days later, Glei and the rescued tribesmen return to their tribe and plant the seeds, which begin growing pretty quickly. With Glei as the new leader and enough food to save the village, Old Mother's prophecy has finally been fulfilled. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.